Hey guys, what we're going to talk about today is our updated 1400 horsepower low profile intercooler for the Holly low, mid, and high ram intakes. Kind of wanted to go back to the drawing board with the Holly, the, the low profile, which is our most popular intercooler option, and we wanted to make it better. As we took some of the stuff that we did on the Texas Speed intercooler and we incorporated that into the Holly intercooler as well. Uh, so what we were able to do was take our 3.25 uh, or three and a quarter inch tall intercooler and we were able to reduce that down to two and three quarter or 2.75 inches in height. So what you're getting is a unit that packages really nicely. Um, you're, you're, you're adding between the lid and the base, you're adding two and three, three quarter inches. So like I say 2.75 inches but we're gonna retain the three inch core. And the way that we do that is we actually extend the core down into the lower part of the plenum by an eighth of an inch and then up into the lid by an eighth of an inch also. Uh, in doing so, you have to completely redesign the way these things were made. Uh, for, the, for the fitment reason, uh, we had to go back and we had to make new tanks. Uh, we had to redesign our plates, which are now a full side plate as you can see uh, with the uh, tick emblem uh, bolted in place instead of lasered in place. So something else we did uh, working on the new design was we decided to change the, uh, the port size. Traditionally, we did a Dash 16 ORB um, and that was just generalized because that's what we do on our larger intercoolers as well. Uh, but we decided to, uh, to figure out exactly how much flow we needed to make this thing cool um, and do everything right. And you know, we found that a 12 will really do the trick, or really do the job for most applications. By reducing that size, we were able to uh, put the fittings in a little bit better place. Uh, these are actually on about a 40 or 45 degree angle. Uh, and what that does is it kind of points them up and away from the fuel rail. We decided to do that because you can run something like uh, a 90 degree O-ring fitting. Um, and this will just thread right in with an O-ring seal. And what it gives you the ability to do is, you know, tuck a nice uh, coolant line right beside of your fuel rail. Uh, and it just look nice and clean, it'll flow right with it. Uh, and that gives you a, a better better looking install uh, to go along with a, a better looking cooler in my opinion. Uh, but you can still also do a straight fitting, you know, just a straight ORB fitting if you want. And then you can certainly hook a, a hose into that, uh, 90 degrees, it's just going to stick up a little higher than this would. Uh, nothing wrong with that, it'll work all the same. but. Uh, with, with the idea of how it's going to look in mind, we decided to do that as well. Uh, one of the reasons that this uh, intercooler size is so popular is because the 1400 horsepower rating kind of puts it in a, a, a sweet spot for the market. You know, a lot of guys with 700 horsepower to 900, 1000, 1100, uh, that's pretty common nowadays. And uh, this, this intercooler fits all of those needs. So it, it encompasses a lot of people uh, as far as who can use it and it just makes for a makes for a really good fit for a lot of applications one of the neat things about this new design uh, and you know going back to even our old design our larger intercoolers we put like to put a water port on both sides of the front and rear tanks and the reason for that has always been it gives you the option of which side you want to make your connection on so if you have something in the way over here you still have a way to connect over here gives you more more mounting options so we have some new pump kit options, uh, one of which comes as a standard uh, single feed. So you just have one single line feeding the one side of the tank. Uh, and I personally like to feed the front side of the tank. That way acceleration brings the water back and the pump's not having to push it forward. Um, but you'd have one single feed and then one single return, just as any, any standard air water does. Uh, but something that makes them just a little bit more efficient and gives you a little bit better distribution of water flow is if you actually wire off from the pump or split it off from the pump and put two ports and two inlets into the front tank uh, and then do two returns out the back and basically what that does is it's going to give you fresh cool water in both sides of the tank to, to feed the core and it's going to create a little bit better uh, cooling effect as it goes you know front to back because you're introducing cold water to both sides instead of from just one side so with this new design it becomes the the shortest one we make as far as added height between the base and lid uh, as I said before, it still carries that three inch core thickness just as it did before. Uh, it just packages a little better. Now with the change in this intercooler design, we're at uh, 11.82 inches. 
Uh, so a significant decrease in height, uh, so it packages a little better than even a high ram does by itself when you use this cooler with the low ram manifold. So as always with our products that we make here in-house, we try to source everything that we can in the United States, including the raw stock that we machine the parts from, um, the core itself is manufactured in the United States, and even the hardware. You know, we said we were using ARP hardware. Well, that's manufactured at ARP's facility in the United States. So we're trying to keep everything that we build here in-house as American as we can. Do we have a combination that would fit a uh, Hemi setup? Yeah, Holly makes an intake for a Hemi uh, that is a high ram, and it has this same bolt pattern. So yes, our intercoolers will work with the Hemi combos as well. What kind of air restrictions are incorporated with a air water intercooler? Yeah, well, with any kind of intercooler, you're, you, you've got a, a nest of fins inside and you're blowing air across those fins. So there's always naturally going to be some amount of pressure drop. Uh, and pressure drop is going to be dependent on how much pressure you're trying to put through it. Um, so to give, a, to give a number of percentage is not really a way, uh, there's not really a way to do that. But I can give you a couple of examples. Uh, we have a couple of customers that um, they've seen, we've had some customers claim that they've seen under a pound of boost drop on a you know, 900 horsepower application. Uh, and then we've had a couple of customers that have had you know, one, one and a half pound drops on some of the 12 to 1300 horsepower applications. But I think some questions come through with the assumption that you're running engine coolant through this intercooler. Okay. How would you respond to that? Uh, I wouldn't do it um, because, you know, even if you're bringing water off the cold side of the radiator, um, it's still hot. Yeah, the intent is to run a, an ice water box somewhere in the car. Um, if you do a lot of street driving, you know, and you want to run a heat exchanger setup, that's an option as well. But I certainly wouldn't run it in with the radiator that cools the engine. I would have a separate radiator to cool just this.